I'm Caroline Hendershot, and this is What's Your Why, an in-depth interview series where you get to know the player underneath the helmet at the New York Jets. For this episode, I sat down with Quincy Williams, and we talked about his life growing up, how he dealt with losing his mother at such a young age, and his journey at Murray State University. Make sure you stay tuned for part two, where we talk about his NFL draft experience, signing an extension with the New York Jets, and his career year in 2023. having an all-pro type of year. And he plays this game fast, leading the Jets in tackles. He's becoming one of the best in the league. He's working his ass off. But broken up! He is hit hard. Quincy Williams flying through on top. I would challenge everyone. There's not a better backer in the NFL right now. He is playing at an elite level. Hit behind the line and dropped by Quincy Williams. Left, and it is knocked away. Smith hit hard. Quincy Williams blows him up. All right, Quincy, born and raised in Alabama. You're the oldest of four, right? Oldest of four. Okay, so what was that like growing up? Really was, it was one of those things where you didn't want to make a bad decision because you didn't want them to follow, but then it's also like, all right, let me show you what's going to happen if you do decide to do this. Mm -hmm. So it was like a lead by example type thing, good and bad. Was it chaotic growing up with two brothers? No, nah, it was like normal wrestling. Um, anytime we had a situation that needed to be handled, of course we handled it with wrestling. Yeah. So I think that's like a normal household thing yeah. though, but it wasn't any like, because we did that, it wasn't any like fighting, fighting or anything like that. Wrestling was like the closest thing. Were there any like um, holes in walls growing up? Oh, a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> could have went to trade school for it early um, <laughs> just because we had to patch them up ourselves or paint them before our parents got back. Anything like that. I'll never forget this one time we had like bought these little fireworks that like you throw and they pop uh -huh. and we were throwing them at each other in the house and they got like all over the house and the walls and stuff like that. And you had to cover it up before your parents came Had to came cover back. it up. Ended up getting like this white spray paint uh -huh. or whatever. So you like sprayed the spots and our room was blue. <laughs> so when my parents got home, we was like, it kind of looks like a sky. Like the clouds are just a white paint. <laughs> How would you say and how would you describe how your parents raised all four of you? It was very honest. That's the biggest thing. So it wasn't like we're going to make sure they don't experience none of the bad stuff. It was more like, all right, what, what questions do you have? What decisions would you like to make? All right, let me show Let me like introduce you to it. So it was like one of those things. So it was more you can come and be comfortable with like anything, any questions you have, any concerns you have. Both both of my parents are one of those people that was like, just come ask me other than us learning from somewhere else or like learning it from a friend or trying it with a friend or something like that. And it ended up bad or something like that. How do you think that helped shape you as you grew up because you were just comfortable kind of going to them and asking them whatever you needed? Biggest thing was like learning how to lead. I feel like my parents did a very good job at showing me like how they lead and things like that. So I took that same thing. So like if I if anybody have a problem and come talk to me about anything like that, I ask them first question I ask like, are you asking for advice or are you just asking me to listen? Because that's my biggest thing my parents have said also. So I kind of take that into like when I'm just talking to people and things. What was your mom like? Uh, my mom was a wonderful person, a great person. Um, a lot of the things that she taught us still holds up to today, or also the lessons that I'm learning, well, experiencing now are lessons that were taught to me when she was here. So that just like proves that what she was doing was good. She was a teacher, right? She was a school teacher, yes. Kindergarten, first grade, and then actually, most recently, my younger sister became a school teacher with Summer, my mom's coworker. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so it was like a full circle type thing, they say. What do you think was kind of that impact of having your mom be a teacher because she obviously cared about how you guys did in school. Was that stressed a lot growing up? Yeah, it was very stressed. My grandmother was a school teacher. I had aunties who were school teachers. So uh, school is very, very important. And then to get to college, school is very, very important. I actually learned the uh, hard, medium, and then the easy way. Corner for short took the easy way. <laughs> uh, did every single thing, got good grades, went to Alabama. Me, didn't really like school that much, but I was consistent in it. So ended up going to a smaller school, uh, being academic, eligible late. So 
that was one of those things, like I say, the medium way. But school is very, very important. We actually got taken out. I got taken out the field one game mm -hmm. just because of my grades and stuff. My mom took us out, the, took me out the field. So school is very, very important. How did she take you off the field? What was that oh, like? Oh, just walk straight on the field. <laughs> she straight did. on the practice field. And like, all right, he can't practice this week. He won't be playing this week either. What made her realize that you shouldn't be practicing all of a sudden? Um, I had my, pro she said I had my priorities in the wrong spot because I had to have a quote unquote backup plan. So um, that was the biggest thing. So with that being said, me being consistent in school was something I didn't like, but me being consistent in it helped me be consistent in something I did like, which is football. Mm -hmm. So. In 2010, your mom is diagnosed with breast cancer and she passes away. How hard was that for you? It was very hard for me being, uh, when my dad's still working also, so me being uh, also young too and learning, but then also having to be a leader in my family. So um, what are those decisions where I could make, where I felt like, all right, I can, this can be a learning lesson for me, I felt like I couldn't make those decisions, so I always felt like I was, always had to be like on point and on right, just so my siblings know how they want to uh, grow up, just be an example for them. Do you feel like that changed you as a leader at that point in your life? Uh, I felt like I was basically called upon earlier, so that's the biggest thing with that, but I felt like it was something that needed to be done, and if I had to choose it, I would I would still do the same thing. I'm gonna be honest, like just step up in that position. My grandma helped me out a lot. My dad worked, still worked and things like that, still in the same house, everything like that. So that was great. Okay, so let's go rewind a little bit. Let's go back to high school. So you are a freak athlete. You were the high jump state champion in Alabama, but you also were excelling on the football field. So why football? What about football really pulled you in? I actually got seven what state championships. Seven? seven? Four indoor and three outdoor. Okay. Tied with Bo Jackson for the high jump state record. No way. Yeah, so it was something I was having fun in, but I ran track just because of to prepare for football. So it was like something that we did during the off season, keep us out of trouble and things like that. So we had to play a sport. That's how I became a swimmer in the first place. Just because summertime, I was like, all right, let's try this sport. I actually was good at it. So I chose football because my brothers played football. So it was another way that we could hang out with each other, spend time with each other. And then also the biggest thing, compete. Cause we was real big on competing with each other. What about linebacker was like your passion and it called for you? The hitting part of it. The hitting part of it. Yeah, so like no matter what I was going through throughout the week or things like that, I knew for a fact I had a a stress relieving point of at the at the day, uh, which was practice. So just you literally not really thinking, just run around, see ball, hit ball type mentality. So not really just taking out my frustration, but as far as like if I had anything on my mind, like it was just my escape from everything. Now kind of learning all the ins and outs of linebacker that you it's so much more than just see ball hip. -hop. Right. Yeah. It's so much more as far as like uh, the technique in the game, mm -hmm. far as the route combination and things like that. I feel like that's why I took a big step this year also. Yeah. Just learning the position and then learning where do I fit in, in the scheme. Okay, so you go to Kentucky to play at Murray State. What about the program really sealed it in for you? Program still today was they they took a shot on me really. Mm -hmm. um, came from I mean came from Birmingham, Alabama. I was gonna be away from everybody, and I was a late qualifier also. So they actually took a chance on me, and it was more like a small city too though. So it was like still kind of family oriented as far as like just the team and stuff. Coaching staff, Mitch Stewart came uh, every week, checked in on me, even came to my classes a couple of times while I was finishing high school. So it was like he bought into what I was like basically selling. It. Do you think that family aspect that you found at Murray State was important to you because of how important family is to you off the field? Yeah, and just because how far I was gonna be away from my actual family. Was it hard to go to college and not have your mom there to fall back on? Of course, you had your grandmother and your dad and your brothers and your sister, but did you ever at any point really feel like you were missing your mom? 
I miss my mom every day. I'm gonna be honest, as far as like, whether it's something that reminds me of her or it's whether like it's a lesson that reminds me of her or if it's just like her favorite thing, like chocolate covered cashews, it's now my favorite, uh, like quick snack or something like that. So every time I eat them, I like Cheez-Its or something like that. But the biggest thing I missed when I went to college was my siblings because I felt like I was like the rock and like just that person who was like the enforcer everywhere, just making sure everyone was good. I had the thought process of like, now who's going to do that for them? So I uh, actually put a couple of people in place just watching over them. Um, I feel like the lessons and stuff that I went through, I basically told them when I was leaving, like, I remember what I did. Some of the stuff I did, some of the stuff don't do. <laughs> you understand the, the decision making and things like that. So I felt like I, when I left, there was in good spirits and stuff like that. And um, I had an open phone policy no matter where I was in class or anything. Like if one of my siblings called me, I'm, they, they know for a fact I'm answering my phone. Do you feel like that has transferred over to just kind of your leadership style within the team and how like everyone kind of feels comfortable around you? Yeah, being dependable. So me and Quentin always talk about like the relationship me and my brother have, we try to have that with everyone. So some people are not as open as others. So, but if you are open, like you got any problems, anything like that, come sit and talk to us. We actually uh, got this thing where we like sit in our lockers and stuff like that. Everybody like huddle up with all y'all got going on throughout the day and stuff because mental health is very huge for us. Cause my mom passed, at first we didn't talk to anybody. And then we started talking to each other. Uh, the siblings and we started talking to each other. Then we left for college. Everyone felt like they was apart from each other, so they were alone and things like that. So it was just one of those things where we kept just kept doing it. Make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for part two, where we talk about Quincy's viral draft moment, signing an extension with the Jets, and his career year in 2023.